Hey there, it's Tank Girl, and this here is the Galaxy S5. Yes, I finally got a Galaxy S5 to review. Well, to be frank, it's not a finally kind of thing. I've just been playing with it, getting a feel for it. As you know, it is one of the most popular phones on the market, and so obviously, if I want to give you guys a review, I'd better play with it for a while. So what's new this year? Um, as you know, from year to year, the Galaxy phones have evolved quite predictably and this year is really no exception. What we're looking at is a 5.1 inch screen this year versus a 5 inch screen last year. It's still a 1080p panel, uh, 1080 by 1920 and it's really really gorgeous. In terms of color calibration, contrast, brightness and all that, it is one of the best displays on the market today for sure. Um, as you can see, the shape of the phone is a little more on the square side, which I prefer. It's more like the Note 3 and the Galaxy S2. This is a good thing in my opinion. So uh, let me flip it over and then we'll, we'll get into more of the details. As you can see here in the back, we've now gotten away from this uh, shiny, slimy, fingerprint happy uh, back cover thing that uh, Samsung did for the GS3, the GS4, and the Note 1, and the Note 2, and started getting away from with the Note 3 and the, the faux leather finish. This is uh, some sort of soft touch, dimpled finish. It feels okay in hand, but it's not the greatest finish. So under here you have a bunch of sensors as usual, uh, and a notification LED, the uh, Samsung logo alongside the earpiece, and of course the front-facing camera, it's 2 megapixels. The buttons are slightly different. We have the back button right here, of course, and then we have the home key that hasn't changed. But here on this side, instead of the menu button, we now have a task list or app list button. And this is a huge improvement in my opinion. I think that Samsung's finally getting into doing what's right to be a true Android device these days. A menu key is kind of ridiculous. My only wish is that I'd love these to be swapped. I'd want the back on this side and the recent buttons on this side just because it's the right way, it's the Nexus way. In the back you have a new camera, 16 megapixels widescreen camera in addition to contrast autofocus, phase detection autofocus actually allows uh, autofocus in low light and that's actually a big improvement but it's not quite as good as the laser autofocus on the G3. Uh, here's the LED flash and next to it you can see another sensor. This actually is a heart rate monitor and then you've got the Samsung logo of course. This is a T-Mobile device by the way but no branding from T-Mobile thankfully. Galaxy S5 branding, the little mono speaker here and now walking you around the edges on top of course you have the uh, remote control LED uh, secondary microphone next to it and of course the headphone jack here. Again, one of my pet peeves with Samsung is, is this, this design element here. I, I really hate when they have a bump where the headphone jack is and the USB port. Why not smooth this and flatten this out like HTC does or, or LG does? It looks, it looks clunky. Uh, so on the uh, left hand side you have the volume rocker as expected. Going down to the bottom you have the primary microphone right here and next to it is this flap which hides a micro USB 3.0 connector and the flap, I'll get to why there's a flap in a second. I'm not quite sure you need USB 3 on a phone. I'm not quite sure the transfers are really significantly faster with this, but hey. On the right hand side you have the usual, the power lock button which is a standard for Samsung devices and really nothing else. So here's what's interesting about the Galaxy S5 this year is that it's IP67 dust and water resistant. What does that mean? Well, you have that flap that I showed you at the bottom here and as soon as you turn the battery cover over you'll notice this rubber seal all the way around. It's a gasket for water resistance. Uh, you can see the battery here. This is a 2800 milliamp hour battery this year and then the speaker you see the SIM card, I have a nano SIM and a micro SIM adapter inserted here and above it is the micro SD card slot so you still have expandable storage and then the camera pod and the heart rate monitor. So there you have it in a nutshell in terms of the hardware and the design. Again, as I mentioned, why isn't this completely seamless and flush? Why is there this bump at the top? So in terms of the insides, this is a pretty much a state-of-the-art device and you wouldn't expect anything else. It is after all a flagship. It has a Snapdragon 801 on board with 2GB of RAM, 
This particular device is a T-Mobile unit and it has 16 gigabytes of built-in storage, but remember you can expand this with micro SD storage. So let me show you the heart rate monitor functionality. It's actually a pretty interesting functionality. So you basically start the heart rate app like this, and then as soon as you hold your finger close to this, you see the red light goes off, and it actually shines this red light through your finger, and it tells you what to do here. So I'm not going to talk too much, not too loud. It wants me to be still and quiet. And let's see if we get something. And look at that, 69 beats per minute. That's pretty much normal for me, so that's about accurate. Unfortunately, the accuracy of this is a little in the air. It's not very consistent. There are times when it seems very erratic. Uh, let me bring up my Nexus 5 as a model, since I always like to use it as a prop. The camera is pretty good. Here it is, and as you can see the white screen because it's in 16 megapixel mode right now. And as you can see focus is fast maybe, but it's not G3 laser autofocus fast. And that's, you know, it's a little unfortunate in my opinion. It, it seems to that this phase autofocus is really not necessarily adding that much in terms of performance. But the, the camera is very capable and captures a lot of detail. Um, thankfully, there's still a whole load of manual controls, as you can see here. You'll see there's ISO, and uh, you know if you scroll down a little bit here, you'll get exposure, which is really important. And uh, let's see, I think there is white balance somewhere. There it is. So you still have manual controls, kind of ish. It's not M8 good in terms of UI, but it gets the job done. The HDR is actually easily accessible but really, other than that, it's pretty much standard fare. There's no OIS, so low light is not really the Samsung Galaxy S5's forte. But it does perform reasonably well, and it does support 4K video recording, which is a pretty nice feature to have these days. So let's talk about TouchWiz. Well, you know, TouchWiz is still here, and I really don't like it. It's actually, I think, gone worse this time around uh, by changing, for example, the settings menu into these uh, circular icons. I cannot find anything. Everything is all over the place. It's a real big mess and a terrible user experience. It does not feel like Android, and I just don't understand why Samsung would do this. And this is why I'm against skinning phones. This just doesn't make sense. So, you know, that's, that's the biggest gripe other than the design and materials. Again, other than that, you know, it is a perfectly decent flagship phone. In that sense, it's pretty much like the rest of the Android flagships today. And speaking of which, maybe it's time for a comparison with some of these. So, this is the Nexus 5 next to the Galaxy S5. And as you can see here, and the Galaxy S5 is not that much bigger, but it is a bigger phone than the Nexus 5. And more importantly, 5.1 versus 5 inches, uh, AMOLED versus IPS. And so that's kind of like the biggest difference uh, up front. Uh, of course, in the back, you know, it looks like this. So 16 megapixels, no OIS on the Galaxy S5 versus 8 megapixels with OIS. Again, I'm a big fan of OIS. I think it makes a huge difference. And in terms of thickness, really, um, let's have a look here. So this is what it looks like. As you can see, not a huge difference in thickness. Obviously, most phones today are about the same thickness. It really doesn't matter so much. So that's one down. Now, the next logical one to compare it to is the HTC M8. So here it is. And as you can see, they're almost the same size. The HTC M8 has this crazy tendency to be very tall, mostly because the HTC logo is kind of in a band of wasted space here. So again, like the Nexus, you got 5.1 AMOLED versus 5.0 IPS. Uh, both are really great panels, but um, you know you have a size difference here to contend with. But in terms of spec, they're very similar, both Snapdragon 801. If I flip them over, uh, you can really see the difference in tallness of the HTC One M8. Dual color LED flash here in the back makes a difference with skin tones when taking pictures of the flash on. That's a nice little thing to have. 
Of course, the dual camera on the M8 is a gimmick and they removed OIS from the main sensor, which I think is a big mistake. But in terms of design and build and quality of materials, this is the phone. The M8 is really the winner. You touch them or see them side by side and literally the Samsung Galaxy S5 just feels like junk in comparison. So let's see, in terms of thickness, what we've got here, let's compare them real quick. Well, again, you know, it's a silly comparison. Thickness is pretty much the same, very similar anyway. But the, the kind of tapered edges of the M8 make it look thinner here. And then finally, we have one more flagship to compare it to, and this is the LG G3. And here it is. And so these are the two Korean super phones. And this is where you can kind of see that despite the G3 having a 5.5 quad HD display, much more resolution, it's not that much bigger. It's a little taller and a little wider. And of course, you know, bringing up the app tray here, you can actually see the difference in contrast and brightness. Uh, the, the Galaxy S5 has a really quite an amazing display. And of course, the G3 does too, but the G3 is more about the resolution than the contrast and color quality. And so you can see it pretty clearly here. Uh, and then uh, if I flip them over, this is what they look like. And again, here's the tale of two plastic phones, yet one feels cheap and one feels expensive. This is plastic. This is a removable plastic back cover, but it feels really nice. It feels like aluminum almost, despite the fact that it is plastic. So, you know, again, I wish Samsung would actually step it up a notch. They are the world leader in terms of Android phones, and they still don't want to put the effort into making beautiful devices that feel like they're not, you know, cheap plastic. And this is the thing that I don't understand. Now, let's compare the um, thickness. This kind of tapered edge thing makes it feel thinner than it is on the edges. So, yeah, my Galaxy S5 review here... Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, like this video and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, you can follow me on tankgirl.com, T-N-K-G-R-L.com. That's my blog. And on Twitter, where I'm just, of course, tankgirl without the vowels, T-N-K-G-R-L. So I'll catch you next time with more phone reviews. Cheers.